back, everybody, to We Are TPM with myself, Kyle Teixeira, and sitting across from me, smiling face, John Teixeira. This week, we are here to talk about and continue um, our series. This will be the eighth and final part of our nine-part series, uh, The Nine Concerns When Thinking of Renting Your Home. Uh, The concern today is, what if there's a ton I got to do to get it ready? Yeah, what if there's a ton to do if you got to get it ready? Do you think anybody noticed that this is the eighth and final part of a nine-part series? You did that <laughs> so well. They didn't, you you were, did that so well. I had to point it attention. out. I had to point it out because <laughs> that's how I am. So, so a couple things come to mind. You know, when people kind of freak out and go, "Ah, oh, there's too much." You know, there's just too much to do here. You know, a usually there's not as much to do as you think, right? And that's where where somebody like us can come in, a realtor, a property manager, somebody that's kind of out of the weeds a little bit, not living in the home, can help you, can come in and help you decipher what you really need to do and don't do to get it ready for a rental. Yeah, I think breaking it down, breaking down that concerns a way to do it too. Like there's too much to do. Uh, Figure out what there is to do. You know, too much to do is just a vague exaggeration. Um, You need to find out what you may be surprised by what you may need to do, may not need to do, um, and what's important to do. And what we try to help our clients do is, is get in there and do a walkthrough and and give suggestions or write a list, do it all for them, you know, whatever scope you want on that of this is what you need to do to make it rentable, to make it marketable as a rental, which is a lot different. And we talk about this a lot. It's a lot different than making something marketable for sale because when you're doing when you're selling it you want to get top dollar right Mm -hmm. doing top dollar improvements or whatever is a lot different than i need to rent this home um what's important because a lot of that too much i hear and see and talk to people about uh is commonly things that bothered them while Mm -hmm. they lived there that's right and they don't want to bother someone else or whatever but it could be a completely useless thing that you don't need to do for rental you know rent you rent things as is so 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 we use the term that you want to make it rentable, but really what you're trying to do is make it livable for a tenant, right? Yes. So if it's got really nice, clean for mica counters, that's okay. You know, mm-hmm. people think, oh, I have to upgrade to granite so I can get an extra 200 bucks a month. Well, you can get upgrade to granite if you really want to, if you don't have anything else to do, right? <laughs> but if it's just a long list of overwhelming things to do, like... Move on to the things that need to be done. Well, and if it's worth it, you know, market conditions come into play and you likely don't have any idea how those are coming into play. Like in a market like this, we're in some crazy demand rental market. Um, You know, granted, isn't going to get you an extra 200 bucks a month. It might get you an extra 20 bucks a month and in... It's it'll be indistinguishable, but it's going to cost you. You know, the fact is it will cost you five to eight grand or whatever. Um, and Not anymore. It's cheap now. Oh, yeah. You know, it's the only thing that's been going down. <laughs> well, rocks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not all rocks. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the point is that, you know, do what's important. Make sure you have expertise and knowledge of what you need to do when for this is actually a concern. Um, and that that breaks down into more points like it's going to cost you something. And that's probably your concern that it's going to cost you something to get this home ready to rent. And there's solutions there too. Absolutely, Kyle. <laughs> I was trying to collect myself from coughing. My apologies. Um, so, yeah. So the other thing is, the other thing I was thinking about when I'm thinking about that person and the mindset of that person, right, is, you know, when we, when we, have, when we think about doing something as important as this is, and it just seems overwhelming because you tend to list yourself in your brain, right? My wife does this. She's the champion of of listing herself, and and she tries to she tries to list me by giving me her list, and I'm like, don't list me, right? Like those kinds of people overwhelm themselves with their lists in their brain. So after you've determined what that list actually should be, and get rid of the things that shouldn't be, and by the way, to back up on that a little bit, I find a lot of times. People think they need to be doing certain things and disregard things that they actually need to be doing, right? Mm-hmm. We're doing one right now. We're getting ready like like the owner wanted to do a whole bunch of stuff. And I said, no, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. But by the way, you do need to fix this shower and completely, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we, we just shuffled his concerns and his money to something that was more appropriate. <clears throat> Which is why it's so important to get somebody with some expertise in there, what, regardless of what, like, for example, us, if if... You, you know, you pick your manager, right? And 
you know, we can go out there before you start anything and give you advice on all these things. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, you could be really setting yourself up for failure. And we've seen this where, oh, I'm taking care of the, the, you know, the make ready. And then we hear from them two, three months later and make ready's done. We get in there and we're like, okay, well, you didn't, you, you know, there's still all these things that ne need to get done for it to be rentable. And now we're doing work anyway on a, you know, hiring contractor anyway, because you're done with it. You already spent three months working on it. Um, but time is money, you know, we're going to get in there give you a quote and try to get that thing done in, you know, a week, two weeks or whatever, and save you those two, two months of rent that you just lost, which would make up for the repairs that, you know, in a lot of cases will make up for the cost you would have paid it to a contractor, not much less your own time and efforts that you put into doing your own make ready. You know, Kyle, you're hundred percent right. And I wanted to make that point kind of at the end here. Let's, let's back up just a little bit. Let's talk to that person that still is going to do it. Okay. okay. They're not going to hire a property manager because we're not quite done with that person. So that person is overwhelmed. They're listing themselves. Okay. And so that old adage, after you figure out what you need to do, and it seems like a lot, just start doing stuff one at a time. You know that old adage, you can eat an elephant one bite at a time. You know, it seems overwhelming when you start, but pretty soon you're finishing that elephant. That just seems like a gross adage, doesn't it? Now that I think about it, it's like who's <laughs> eating elephants, right? But but the point is it's something really big and it seems like it seems like it's not possible, but you can actually do it. You just have to start one at a time. So get your list down, right, to to what you actually need to do, and then just start doing one one thing at a time. Right? I'm gonna I'm gonna change that to a cow, and a then cow. we can start at the filet mignon. I love and it. We could, you know, then we this go to the ribeye. We can work our way down that way. I guess. <laughs> I guess I guess the only reason why we don't use cows is because they're not as big as elephants, right? Yeah, that's true. I guess. Can, how but about if still... we eat a cow as big as an as big as an elephant? Can we do that? We should. Change I don't know. This. That's not. I don't think that's one of the common concerns, though. No? So, no. Okay, you're right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I was just thinking if culturally we can change this adage forever. <laughs> <laughs> for it to make more sense. Well, uh, once you start uh, knocking that stuff out, you know you got to consider time. If you know how long is it going to take you to do it, and do you not know? Is it open ended? Are you just going to do it on weekends or after work, or you know how, how does that look? And what's that going to cost you? Not just cost of materials, cost of time. Um, one of the biggest things you can do to uh, you know help yourself there is look, is first look at what you're going to get rent. You know if you're doing it yourself, you got a property manager. What are you going to get for rent? And if that's two thousand dollars a month, you know, after your fees or whatever, you net say eighteen hundred dollars a month. So the longer you take, you're losing eighteen hundred dollars a month. If that's over like a thousand dollars worth of repairs, you should just hire somebody and have it done in a couple of days and get that thing well, on the market. More than that, the cost of ownership, right? Yeah, is your true. taxes, your insurance, if you're paying a mortgage on that home, you're actually paying to own that home also. So and including your, you add your co your loss of rent to that, right? Then, then it makes it even worse. You know, you make a point. Like I'm a, I, I, I think you and I are the same in this, where we have a tendency. Our brains are wired to want to do things ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. There's certain people on this planet that are wired to be do-it-yourselfers, and then there's others that don't want to do anything for themselves, right? That's kind of, you really fall into one of those two camps. And the people that are do-it-yourselfers have a really hard time letting go of that and hiring somebody else to do it. Um, I can do anything. There isn't anything on a house I haven't done, can't do, or don't have the desire or will to do. Mm -hmm. But what I do recognize is the time value proposition you talked about a minute ago before we stepped back was... Um, I do recognize my value, the value of my time is worth so much more than the time I could spend throwing a hammer or putting up tile in a shower or doing any of that stuff, which truthfully, if I'm being honest, I'm going to do it a lot. I'm not going to do it as good as a professional. I'm just not. I don't yeah, do it every you may, day. Maybe rush. So like, and then it's quality of life proposition too. There you go. You know, there's multiple aspects of that. I'll use an example. My first house, I bought it. It was a fixer upper and Took me three months to move in because we did the you know spent all my time uh, every second I had renovating it, fixing it up. Um, it, but it still took 
you know, three months to get it ready for moving. And then I finally moved in. That wasn't even to rent it. Um, in the second house, my wife said, we can get this house because fixer upper, because obviously I'm going to convince her to get a fixer upper because in, <laughs> in, in, in our industry, that's called a deal. Mm. Um, and, you know, we go get the deals. That was way back when. <laughs> so there was a contingency there. I don't want to do what we did last time, right? So I got everything, pretty much all the same stuff done, but I paid somebody to do it, you know, and it got done in two weeks. But you needed to have that experience the first time so that you can appreciate it the second time, yeah, right? Is. There's no way you would have you would have appreciated what you were doing, been able to manage that contractor had you not done it the first time. So it's okay that you did it. But now here I'm thinking about putting my house on the market for rent, and I've got this long list. The do-it-yourselfer needs to let go. Mm-hmm. The do-it-yourselfer is never going to, well, depending on how long the list is and how motivated they are, they potentially could never get through that list if they don't solicit the help of a professional. Exactly. And how many times have we given a, you know, done this process, walked through, seen what needs to get done, gotten the estimate for the homeowner, and they didn't like the number, so they're like, I'm going to do it myself. And... That if we would have executed that, it would have been on the market and a tenant in it probably two weeks later. Checking in with this person, whatever. Six weeks later, they're still working. Six on weeks it. is is a yep. good. Uh, yep. It's that's a that's a timeline that was probably the shortest we hear. It's, it's I've seen it take six months after those conversations, and they're like, "We're ready to go." Um, you know that just doesn't make any sense. You know, you lost more than that estimate, and now you spent your last six months working on a house that. You know, you're going to give over to renters and now you're going to be extra pissed in a, in a year or two years, three years if they, if they mess it up, because now it's all your hard work, your, your blood, sweat and tears mm-hmm. that went into that renovation. Yep. Yep. So it adds emotion to it too. Yep. It sure does. You read about that. It mm-hmm. absolutely does. All right. So let's get, so let's, what, Kyle, let's talk about the ultimate, the, the ultimate solution to this problem. Okay. So we've talked about the person that needs to, They need to figure out what they actually need to do, right? Mm -hmm. They need to take it one step at a time and start doing it. Some people need to let go, right, and and actually hire a professional contractor to get the work done so you can get it done faster. The ultimate one is to hire somebody really great that can handle the turnover for you. And I try to finish with the like us thing. Like This is what we do for our clients, right? When they trust us with their homes and say, here you go. I'm going to give it to you. You take care of it. We, we, we handle all that turnover. We handle hiring the contractors and making those decisions and getting it done so you don't have to. And we get it rented. Mm-hmm. And we do it quickly. As you said, in a week or two instead of two, three, four, six months. Yeah, and and sometimes it's the money, and a lot of people don't even ask the question or think of this. But um, and I'm not making any promises on our end right now. But the you know ask whoever your expertise is, whether it's us or it's another property manager. You know, it's always worth asking. Do they do payment plans for make ready renovations? Mm-hmm. You know, they fund it, and then over time your cash flow pays it back. At least you're still getting that benefit. You know, mm-hmm. you're getting that time to market. You're getting that not a mortgage coming out of your bank account that's not being covered by something. Right. So uh, it can be huge. Even if it's go get a loan, you know, say you needed five grand for a, re- for a uh, renovation and it sounds stupid to go get a loan to rent out a property, right? Well, that five grand, you get it, you pay somebody, you get it rented, you say you're cash flowing, you know, a couple hundred bucks, that just gets decreased by your monthly payment on that loan or it all goes to that loan until it's paid off. Whatever the case may be, it's still better than the alternative of what, you know, the time, blood, sweat, and tears, and mm-hmm. money you still have to spend to uh, to get that renovated. Because right. cost of materials and stuff, people don't believe is included in those contractor <laughs> estimates and stuff, but it is, especially when you uh, when you go do it yourself. You're like, okay, do it. You know, these these materials and all these steps do cost more than than I think. So, and one thing people should ask their property managers is if they if they do they add surcharges to repairs for turnovers and so forth. Do they mark them up? Do yeah. they mark them up? Yeah, because yeah. um, some people do do that, and that's that's a little bit disappointing to me. I don't like we don't do that, and I don't like to see people doing that. Um, I feel like part of our service is is using our expertise to get this done, um, and you pay me a regular you know a regular 
commission basically to, to do that job. Um, so I would ask that question, you know, it's yeah, I always ask that question. I mean, I'm not that I need to tell anybody. I'm, I'm, I, a lot of people ask that question, mm -hmm. but that's good. That means it's known and that it should be asked and it mm -hmm. should. So what else, Kyle, that person is overwhelmed that thinks that they have too much. Is there anything else? Do we hit everything? Does there anything else they need to know? Uh, the, yeah. The alternative concern, I got too much to do to get it rented. Well, then you have a, too too much to do to sell it you know <laughs> if you, you got go. if you got too much to do to get it rented then you have twice probably as much to do to sell it um so what what is your alternative you... or or you're living in something you don't uh you don't even approve of yeah yeah that's true because you wouldn't even put a tenant in it yeah. so why are you living in it <laughs> people like to uh you know upgrade all the things that they would love right before they leave right yeah, they do so. <laughs> they do it all the time pay for a nice new shower and you're like i should have done that years ago but no <laughs> <laughs> well good kyle i think this is i hope that this has been a helpful series what we were trying to do with this series was was help people through the objections they have when they're presented with the question hey why don't you rent your house out right because mm -hmm. some people aren't even presented with that question they don't process or give it the thoughts but when they do what we've done with these eight parts to this nine part series <laughs> is we have we've presented you with those common objections and answered them for you so that you can make better sense of it so you're not so overwhelmed and you can sift through and make that decision a little bit better, a little bit easier I hope yeah just trying to provide more of the logic to yep. the concerns than the emotion that it's, gets involved yeah it's easier when it comes from somebody like us because we do this every day so it's easier for us to make these decisions and and to answer these questions with a sh with assurance mm -hmm. and certainty and that's what people need and that's what people other people that don't do this every day that's what they don't have they don't have that certainty that they're looking for so hopefully we've provided that with this series and i'm looking forward kyle to moving on to some some bigger and better things some more creative things we, we got in the pipeline let's do it let's get creative with it so if you guys have any questions want to talk to us or you know interested in anything in these series or just have a lot of concerns maybe even more than nine or eight whatever it is Give us a call, 817-818-9039. Shoot us an email at showmethemoney at wertpm.com. Look forward to speaking with you, and thank you guys for tuning in again. We out. Out.